So I'm going to give a quick demo of how Axolotl works and how you could use it to solve some logical problems. So you can see here, I have on the start screen, that you could either click on the kebab button or on the hamburger button and choose your problem. So let's start with the kebab button. So you can see here you have the ability to load problems. This is from a file, save the proof picture, which we'll see in a little bit. Copy the latex uh, proof to the clipboard so you could put it into a file or you could start a tutorial. So for those who want to go over the tutorial, it has 24 steps on how to solve problems with Axolotl. All right, so here goes the menu that we're gonna see in a second. I will go to the menu now. So let's choose a problem from classical logic. In case you don't like this uh, font size, so we could go to the problem so you see one, we're gonna choose this problem here. If this font size is too large for you, you could change the font size by clicking over here. It instantly changes. Let's make it a little bit smaller so we see everything on the screen. And that's what you get. The next step we could do is we want to apply one of the rules down here. So you could see this is the list of rules here. We want to apply it to the problem up here. All right. So the rules are read from left to right, as you can see with the arrow there. And the delta represents extra goals. So this here is a single goal we have right now, but depending on the rule we apply, we end up with multiple goals. So let's see what happens when we apply for multiple goals. So we're going to choose the second rule and we're going to choose this uh, problem or this goal right now. And we're going to apply the rule. But before we apply the rule, there is a view you could get if you click on the rule long click. So this is the rule display and we could see what would happen if we applied this rule to the current problem. So clicking on, if you go to the bottom here, you see it's in the empty set because we don't have anything selected yet. And that's why the variables are there. If we click on the problem, you can see here goes the instantiation. So we could zoom in, look at the, what's there. You see this is the implication left rule or arrow left rule. And this is what the result of applying the rule would be. So I'm pressing the back button, we go back to this, the main screen. And now if we want to apply the rule, we have to swipe to the left or right, swipe to the right. All right, so here we go, we swipe to the right, and we see that W will be replaced by A implies C, and we see here is the matching substitution. We see X is gonna be replaced by B, Y by C, and finally Z is gonna be replaced by A implies B. So after applying the rule, what we could see now is, is that the problem state now has two goals in it. These are two goals that we have to prove to complete the proof. Let's say we're not satisfied with what we just proved or what we just derived. We could now swipe left and this will undo the rule application. But let's see, we want to redo that rule application because it was correct. However, to redo it, right, we want to do it without all of these additional steps telling us the variables. Let's say we already understand everything. What we could do then is we could click on observation mode in the menu, turn off observation mode, and we could apply the rule with no intermediate steps. All right. Let's say that this view is confusing. You don't really see what's going on here and you would like to have uh, a more comprehensive view of the problem. Well, this is easy to do. You go here to the view proof, as you can see in the menu, right? And you click on that. And what you get is you get a view of the proof and the rules pretty printed. And this shows you the current state of the proof. So as you can see, we have two question marks. Those question marks represent what has not been uh, handled yet. Let's go back to the problem by clicking on problem. All right. Now what we could see is we could apply other rules. So for example, one of the rules we could apply, let's say to the first one here, we could apply the first rule on the list. If we click on it, we see we get this here. And now we have a choice. All right. We could either apply the it to this problem, or we could apply it to this one here. But as you can see, we can't actually apply here because it says the rule is not applicable. We can only apply it to this state here. Now, is there a way to get the rule to be applicable for the bottom problem? There is. So as you see here, this third rule, this allows you to uh, manipulate the terms and to switch their position. So let's apply the third rule here and see what happens. So as you can see, if we were to click on the bottom one, what we end up with is, is we end up with B, comma a implies c is shifted with a implies c. So that gives us 
that puts the correct formula in the first position. If you look at the initial rule, the all not here, but if we go to the rule over here, what we see is, is that the formula in the first position is where the rule is applied. So if we take this here and we apply the third rule in the list, the formula position switches. And now if we try to view the rule application, we could see that it's applicable to either formula. So now let's go back and let's apply the rule. Let's apply it to the one we just switched. We have observation mode off, so it just did it automatically. Let's try it with observation mode on and see what actually is happening. So we click on that again, apply in the first rule. We see is that the W goes to A implies B, X to A, Y to C, and Z to B. And there we go, we applied the rule. Let's turn it off because we don't really need it for now. But at the same time, let's go view the proof and we can see the change that happened in the proof over here. So we see an extra step was added. Let's go back to the problem state and now do the same thing to the other rule. See, now this one changed as well. So if you look at the rule list and see what's applicable to the second uh, rule here, what you'll notice is, is there's this rule, the last rule on the list, I just clicked on it, which says that if you have the same thing on both sides in the first position, you can then get rid of the whole thing. So let's click on that and see what happens. So it's not applicable to the first rule, but the second one, so you can see it's applied, and this is the axiom rule. So if we were to apply there, this rule, we get a simplified problem state. So now let's see what we could do next. So as you can see, we could now split this rule again using the second rule. We get two uh, states again. The first state, you could apply the last rule in the list again, getting rid of it. And now you're left with this one state here. Now to apply the rule to this state, as you can see, there's no more uh, implication, so we can't apply implication anymore. We have to switch the position of B in the sequence. Now after switching the position of B, we could finally apply the last rule, and we solve the problem. So now if we go to the proof view, what we see here is we see the incompleted proof. If we turn it sideways, we could probably see the proof better. So here goes the proof, uh, the proof we just made of this statement. Now from this proof, we could go to the menu and we could either save the proof picture, which will save to your, <clears throat> this will save it to your pictures folder, or you could copy the proof into the LaTeX clipboard. So doing that, it'll just put the proof in the copy and paste button. Doing the other one, it'll save your proof to the gallery. So that's the introduction to Oxalotl. Hopefully you enjoy using the software and bye.